Okay, so I'm just gonna take your shot step by step. So step one is, you know, removing the back plate. Uh, everything is good. I'm just gonna, you know, clean things a little bit when I'm there. Yeah, nothing much. So, you know, keep everything well organized, you know, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. Very slowly, take your time. Everything is very small. Um, the first thing you want to do is to disconnect the battery on the G15. Um, just move this thing up, you know, with a plastic like this. So here's the battery disconnected. Um, again, take your time, go very slowly, and in that case, you just put it, push it away, and you're good to go. Alright, so now that the uh, battery is disconnected, the next step is to disconnect the monitor. Uh, it's going to be happening here, and then after that, we'll take care of the uh, Wi Fi module. And after that, we're just going to take the heat sink away. So, first thing you want to do is take off that sticker. I'm just going to do that right now. So, again, when you're getting there, everything is super small. You know, think of it that way. So, I'm zooming a lot, and you know, the sticker was here. I'm just putting it like that. It's difficult to do two things at the same time, so. Sorry about not showing you while I do it, but you see the idea is you first push on one side and then on the other side and, you know, it will, um, you know, move fairly easily. So just apply, you know, force that way and then this way, gently. And here we go. Sorry, a little blurry. <clears throat> yeah, now everything is disconnected on that side. And now we're gonna take care of the Wi-Fi module. So we're on the other side of the computer and now on that side of a G15 so it's always a good idea you know to take maybe a photo before you do anything because you want to remember like in my case that blacks on the right gray on the left I'm gonna remove that tape again very gently just pull it like this and then we'll disconnect the antenna one by one All right so remove the tape again the tools you need not much right um, one plastic prior you know, using one of these guys and yeah, just very simple tools uh, just through but you know if you need like you can buy some of these box and it's really fancy and in my case also got a bunch of wipes uh, that we're going to be using later so now that i took off the tape i'm going to remove both antenna again everything take your time everything very slowly you don't want to mess up anything. Okay, I took one off and I feel confident enough to both hold my phone and take this one off. So you see I'm just putting the little plastic thingy under and I lift it and that's it. Now the antenna are disconnected, the screen here is disconnected and of course the battery is disconnected and that's it. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna um, take off the uh, heat sink here. So a couple of screws, I mean, basically anything you can see that's attached to it, we're just gonna have to remove. Um, I do remember, you know, some of the antenna goes here. So you want to take care of that part before you do anything, which is just to go there and, you know, make some room like I don't think I'm gonna do it now, but keep an eye on that as you as you open it. All right, I'm just gonna take all these screws out now. Right, so I'm gonna go with these screws, this one, this one, these guys, one, two, three, four, and that guy. And I believe it should be enough to lift it. Um, all right, let's okay. try. So I took off all the screws. These stay the end, we can have a lock mechanism. Again, keep everything organized, take your time. And very, very gently, you know, on both sides, you can start to lift this thing. Uh, I'm just going to use my second hand and do that gently. And we can pay attention to the cables here. You don't want to mess anything, but that's the idea. You know, put a force, you know, from bottom to up and just slowly flip it. And I cannot, unfortunately, do that uh while well, holding my phone so i'll show you what it looks like after. i lift it i had to take care as i said of these two cables on both sides 
And when you do that, again, you don't want to burn anything, you just slowly raise it. It's the second time I'm getting in there, um, but this time I'm gonna document everything. So, you know, my silicon bear is okay. You can see it's useful since there's a lot of spill. Um, anyway, I just want to go back here and, you know, maybe add a little bit more of liquid metal here and, you know, do another clean pasting here. So the liquid metal, I'm just, I'm not applying it directly. It's a little scary. So I'm just making like, you know, a tiny, tiny ball, which I'm gonna be mixing and then applying. Right. So I'm still cleaning, but you can start to see the beginning. Um, I start on that side because it's a little harder and then, you know, I'll go and get the plate. I'm not planning to clean the liquid metal and I get the idea of, you know, reusing it and there's no risk of bubble or hair being trapped since it's liquid and stays liquid. But the other one has tendency to get solid. So again, using uh, tons of Q-tip, taking my time. I don't think it's needed, but you know, if you really want to get fancy, I got, you know, a uh, thermal material remover, thermal surface purifier, uh, a lot of isopropyl thing, but you know, you, you'll be fine with just a, a bottle of isopropyl alcohol. Um, right, and you know, I'm gonna keep cleaning that guy. Alright, so 30 minutes later, and you know, many Q-dips. Um, yeah, so this is the result I have. I'm fairly okay with it. Still a couple of, you know, some blue goo, but uh, it's okay, it's on the side. It's not gonna be any issue. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on uh, adding a little bit of liquid metal, not much. And I'm just gonna be spreading it on this side and then on that side. And once I'm done with that, then I'll reapply some, uh, you know, thermal goo all around the uh, GPU and uh, VRMs and you know all the all these guys here. Um, I guess all memory modules, but hmm. a good idea also to take a photo before you clean anything. So this way, remember where uh, thing goes. That you know most people when the first time I did it, I didn't touch any of that. So you don't have to. The reason I'm doing it is just because for some reason I can't really overclock my memory much and I suspect that could be the reason so you know when I'm here I'm just gonna do my best this time to do everything right and never come back again so liquid metal you know do it the way you want there's many uh, videos on the internet my way safety way of doing it is just you know using a piece of paper and slowly applying it on my q-tip because um, once it get there then I know I can work with it by just rubbing it against the surface. I'm not gonna make a movie of how I do it because again I cannot do that and on my phone but uh, that's my technique some people prefer to apply it right away you know whatever you want to do go for it now uh, I choose safety. Okay, so I did apply the liquid metal uh, hopefully it's not too much if not you know it could be dangerous but you know my the rear is intact. I'm not super happy with a little bit of liquid metal here, so I'm gonna clean that. And then I'm just gonna go and put some thermal paste, uh, you know, all over the place. Okay, so now I'm ready to close everything back. Don't judge me on my <laughs> awful, uh, you know, application and use of uh, a thermal place, but it's been a long time I've opened a PC, but you know, long story short, is better to put too much, but not enough. There's no problem with that. And you know, now I'm just gonna slowly reassemble everything. And hopefully I didn't kill my computer. There's a real risk of doing that. Um, especially because of liquid metal. And so really, really do a good eye inspection, you know, as you, as you apply this thing around, because sometimes you could mistake some of this solder for actually um, I was checking actually for liquid metal. So, looks good. Very generous application of everything. And well, let's see number one if I killed the computer or not. And if I didn't, then let's see if it performed better. So, this is an important part. Um, 
I'm just gonna have to, you know, gently put this thing on. The thing is, you just want, you just want take of it, you know. Don't take it off and on, and um, because you don't want to create any hair gap um, that would affect um, thermal conductivity. So be gentle, put it, you know, align it very well, and then we'll just press uh, it and then, you know, reapply some of these guys and I will reposition the Wi-Fi screen cable correctly. All right. So I didn't apply any pressure yet, but I know it's well aligned because, you know, you can see uh, the screw holes are all aligned. Next, I'm going to reposition this cable and also gently apply. So I did reposition the cables under your little thing, which is something you can do after you put it down. So no worries here. Then I put back the screws, but what I did is I didn't push them to the mask. So usually I like to do kind of an opposite pattern again and again and slowly, you know, turning until everything's ready. So the pressure is applied correctly, um, you know, and uh, not pushed on one side instead of the other. So take your time, don't overdo it. These are gonna be easy because I do believe you're kind of secure, but you know, you want them to be really tight, but never ever force, again, the whole idea here is always be gentle because um, you could mess up a lot of things if you're not. Okay. Everything is secure and now let's do this guy. So again, that's why you won't take a photo before. So I actually don't remember which one was where. I'm just going to look at that and put it back. These are always a little tricky. So, you know, take your time. I don't know if you're going to use a player or, I don't know, the plastic thingy, but we'll do it. So, well, <laughs> and uh, using my fingers and something else I've noticed, which is easy to remember is, you know, black is in front of black and gray is in front of gray. So all is good. Now I'm just gonna nicely reposition the cable, put them flat and then add back the little black pretty, but uh, does the job. And again, you get it now, we're just doing everything in opposites. So next time uh, we're gonna reconnect uh, that little guy. So this one's really easy, just put it back here and then I'm gonna push it back in and put back the stickers on. Okay, that's it. And yeah, be sure you really put it back on, like you should, you know, have no gap on. Okay, so I did reconnect the battery and put back the protection, which is just done by pushing it that way. Uh, I don't know. As usual, it's scary when you put everything back and you don't have to, you know, you should test as much as you want without closing everything, but you know, I like living a risking, risky life. Um, something else I noticed is when I put back um, on the battery, uh, there was a little bit of, uh, of an electric arc, which is never nice, but you know, hopefully this thing is supposed to handle it. That's also why it's a good idea to disconnect the battery because you don't want that to happen to any of this component. Um, yeah, and if you guys wondered, I did upgrade my RAM. I've got uh, a 16 gig memory here and a one terabyte uh, uh, EVO, if I'm correct. And yes, I did protect it with uh, a little bit of a copper heat sink and, uh, and some uh, heat uh, thermal tape. Right, let's put it back on and, you know, let's try to see if we didn't kill anything and if we get better performance out of that. Uh, good luck to everybody else. And uh, what else can I say? Well, I mean, uh, again, be gentle and don't be scared the first time you're going to boot it up. It's just going to take forever. Uh, it's a little scary, but that's because we disconnected the battery. All right, let's put back everything, including the, the little protecting figgy against like again you don't have to do that you should test it before doing it but mm, it's hope it so works i know it's going to take some time just want to show you assuming it's going to work what i need to do so i'm just turning it on oh it's a couple of lights keyboards on <sighs> all right and as you can see it's scary because nothing happens and we just wait and hope.
Oof. That's always a little stressful, but you know, so far so good. All right, I'm gonna plug it to the TV and we're gonna run some tests. Okay, so I got scared a little, like I had a couple of bugs and I had to reboot a couple of times until I made it. Um, I have no idea why. Um, my guess is maybe because I'm testing, as you can see, Windows 11, but you know, nevertheless, after running a couple of benchmark rebooting, rebooting and crossing my fingers, we're back to normal. So decent score. Uh, all of this, by the way, is on turbo. Let me show you. Boop. So I'm on turbo right now. Um, yeah, idling around 67 degrees 47. It's good. And yeah, decent time spy score. I'm sure I can get better with you know the CPU, but you know, for gaming and that daily usage, that's uh, that's pretty good. And as you can see, the temperature during the benchmark were, you know, around 60 for the CPU and they went up to 80 for the CPU and here fairly high, 91, 93, but that's normal for that benchmark. What matters is what's the average CPU and GPU and, you know, between 60 and 70 for both of these, low 70. That's pretty good. I'm just gonna add, uh, maybe just showing one game uh, running and just see what it looks like for normal use, but fairly happy with uh, overall thermal and performance and stability. So I couldn't resist uh, to do a test in <clears throat> with everything maxed out. So both CPU and GPU. Um, before my new repaste, actually, this was too unstable to successfully run a benchmark, um, but now it's pretty cool. I'm, you know, getting over 10k. Um, you know, temperatures. Huh, weird enough, the <laughs> temperatures are lower in that mode. I would say it's because the fans are up. So, yeah, max temperature 85. It's pretty good. And uh, GPU and CPU are around. You know. 67, 61 degree for a CPU. Um, really, really good thermals. Um, I'm not gonna run it that way because it's just too noisy on the thing. But good to know. All right, and so here's the setup computer. There's no uh, ventilation under. It's just uh, just a nice way to uh, keep it uh, up. And yeah, playing you know simple game. Uh, you know and. Um, 60 degrees for a GPU, 62 degrees for a CPU. Everything runs smoothly. So, pretty happy with I'm everything. Testing Cyberpunk, which is, I guess, the hardest game I've got in terms of resources requirement. Yeah, I'm like around in a busy place, like 75, 76 degrees for a CPU, 70, about 70 for the GPU. And uh, yeah, with DLSS, with everything on high, not maxed out, just high on DLSS, and uh, ray tracing. All right. Cool. All right, and from here I can hear the fans a little bit. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty decent. So happy with repasting and uh, happy with uh, overall stability, and definitely way better than when I got my original unit.